Hey guys, welcome back to Dream Daddy, Daddy Dating Simulator. Uh, I had a really fun time with the last one, so I'm doing more. Because this is, I, I really enjoy this one. And I hope you guys are too. And if you're not, too bad. Anyway, um, left off, we just talked to Brian. Yeah, Brian. And now we need to figure out what we're doing next. I think it's time to take a nap. All oh, this sunlight's making me real tired. I don't think I am got enough sleep last night. You slept for 14 hours. Exactly. I need a full 27 hours of sleep in order to be ready for the day. As we're walking home, I hear heavy footsteps come up behind us. Randall, bro. Dude. Turn around and I'm greeted by a familiar face jogging up to us. Craig? Oh. Bro. Bro. Mm -hmm. Holy. Wow, I haven't seen Craig in forever. Mm -hmm. It's been too long, dude. Yeah, wow, you look great. Hey. Haha, <laughs> yeah, I cleaned up my act. Cleaned up his act? Are you kidding me? He's ripped. Amanda, this is my friend Craig. We went to college together. We were roommates for a while, too. If you know what that means. <laughs> Amanda, dude, you probably don't even remember me, but you're so big now. <laughs> hello, and hello, cute baby. Hmm. Oh, thank you. The last time I saw you, I think you were about her size. This is River. Say hi, River. He picks up her tiny wrist and waves it around. River gurgles happily. Are you babysitting? Oh. Nah, dude. River's my kid. Man, it has been a long time. Feels like one minute we're rolling up to exams with bad hangovers and the next we're both fathers. Where you been, man? Hmm. I was working out in California and just relocated the business back to Maple Bay. No kidding. Amanda and I just moved to this side of town. How's Smashley doing? Oh. I mean, Ashley. Ashley is her name. I don't know. She actually still goes by Smashley, and, uh, we got divorced last year. Aw, oh, dude, I'm so sorry. Mm hmm? It's all news. We take turns taking care of River and the twins. It's all copacetic. Twins? You have three kids? Mm hmm? Ain't life something, bro? Right? <laughs> Keg Stan Craig is a father. Of three! Keg stand, Craig. Oh. Oh, uh, yeah, it was my old college nickname. <laughs> he got it because he did a lot of keg stands. Hmm. It's that thing where you do a handstand on a keg and then drink from the keg. Oh. Right. <laughs> he was very good at it. Oh. Ah. Uh, Oh, bro, I hate to be that guy, but I'm in the middle of my daily jog, and I really gotta keep up my heart rate. Brought River along for, you know, resistance training. <laughs> you jog daily? I jog yearly on January 1st, when I promise myself that I'm gonna jog daily for the rest of the year, but give up after 30 minutes and just walk home. Hmm. Well, it's never too late to get back into it, dude. You should join me sometime. Huh, I don't know. Nice. Come on, it'd be fun. We could grab breakfast afterwards, catch up. We could do a bro brunch like the good old days. All right, sure. Sounds great. Great, let's get that going soon. I better get moving. Good to see you guys. Craig gives a little wave, puts his earbuds back in, and jogs off. I can't believe Craig is ripped and has kids. I'm really. Mm. Why is that? The Craig I knew was not fit to be responsible for any living thing, including and especially himself. One time I watched him drink an entire jar of marinara sauce for dinner. <clears throat> I'm not saying I did that, but I'm not saying that I didn't do it. Amanda. He opened up a new pair, a new jar of marinara sauce, and then he drank it like it was a thing that normal people do. It was unholy, and then I asked him what the hell he was doing. He said, and I quote, It's basically a smoothie, bro. Yeah. I mean, technically, he's not wrong. He jogs. He was jogging! Oh. He's like a totally different person. 
Anyway, we better get home. I'll have plenty of time to reflect on how I feel later. Amanda and I flop down onto the couch. Amanda has to shove some empty boxes out of the way before she can sit. Wow, they got unpacked fast. Huh. I mean, we moved into our new place in April, and we're still not completely unpacked. Too bad we're going to be putting my stuff right back into these boxes in a few months. No, don't say that. Mm -hmm. Aw, oh, Dad, it's going to be okay. I'll be fine. I know, I know. It's just, you're my little girl. It's going to be weird not having you around. Hey. I'll come visit, and I'll text you every day. And then I'll take lots of pictures. I mean, obviously, I'm a photography major. Duh. You promise? Hmm. Of course. You gonna be okay all by your lonesome? Oh, come on. I'll be fine. I'll get a dog or something. All right. A dog? Yeah. Forget art school. I'll stay for the dog. Is that what it's gonna take? <laughs> Medium-sized dog, handkerchief around the neck. I get to name it. That's what it'll cost <laughs> for me to give up my dreams. I'm a woman of simple wants and needs. Well, a dog is a lot cheaper than college. <laughs> hmm. Suddenly, a pile of envelopes slides through the mail slide. Speaking of college, Amanda darts over to the envelopes and shuffles through them. She pulls out one and throws the rest back on the floor. Yes. This is from McGowan College of Art and Design. Open it! Mm -hmm. But I'm scared. It's just an envelope. Huh. Yeah, it's just like my entire future. Not a big deal. Huh. Takes a deep breath and lips, rips the letter open with her teeth. We have a letter opener, but okay. Mm -hmm. I hold my breath while Amanda's eyes dart back and forth, scanning the letter. What does it say? Uh, the admissions committee has reviewed your application, blah, blah, blah. Uh. Um, we... Oh. Regret to inform you that we were unable to offer you admission to McGowan College of Art and Design. Uh. That sucks. Oh, sweetie. Uh. It's okay. I kind of saw it coming. I knew I shouldn't have put that experimental stuff in my portfolio. Their admissions officer told me they just want to see portraits or whatever. You're an amazing photographer. I know how much work you put into your portfolio. Some other school is going to want to snatch you up for sure. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I know. It's fine. Are you actually fine, or are you just saying that? Mm. I'm fine. Really. Her face says the opposite, but I probably shouldn't push her on this. Mm -hmm. Oh, and before I forget, MR and MRP are sleeping over tonight. Aww. So, you need me out of the way because I'm painfully uncool? I would choose more delicate phrasing, but yes. Well, I'll have you know that I conveniently already have plans for tonight, so you'll have the new place to yourself. Uh. Yeah? What are your plans? Uh, shit. Uh, 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 I'm the mayor. Amanda, the town needs me. I need to perform my mayoral duties. I must don my top hat and wear my monocle so that I may preside over my mayor stuff. I think you're thinking of the guy from Monopoly. Does not have a monocle. He was a mayor, right? He was a mayor, right? Hmm. He was not. Right. I'm just kidding. I'm actually going to... Watch the game? Thanks. Which game? You know, the game. The one that's on tonight. Ugh. The game, on TV. That's somewhere other than here. You know, the game that you all just lost. Ah. Uh. Okay, cool. While you do that, I'm gonna do drugs and commit some light arson with the Emmas. I'm concerned you're hanging with the wrong crowd. Amanda shrugs. I would have expected you guys to be up to white-collar crime by this point. Maybe money, la money, money laundering at the least. I'm a street rat, Pops. You're kidding about doing drugs and crime, right? Mm. <laughs> yes, Dad. Just making sure. <laughs> Give her a pat on the head. Have fun with your sports. Are you being sarcastic? No, I'm making fun of sports as played out. <laughs> All right, then. Do some light cleaning around the house and decide to clear out before Amanda's friends arrive. Before I leave, Amanda stops me. Oh. Hey, don't forget that you have that meeting with my English teacher tomorrow. All right, Mr. Baker. 
Yep, totally remembered. I'll be there. I hope they have a fun night. I'm really glad Amanda has such sweet friends, even if I can never remember names. You can, you just don't remember which goes to which. Just as I'm heading toward my room, the doorbell rings. Dingle dong. Who could possibly need anything from me right now? Do they know what time it is? I was just about to head out. I walk over to the door and open it. Hello? Hello. Handsome, clean-cut man stands at my door, brandishing a plate of cookies. Hell, oh. Hi, I know it's kinda late. Oh, no. What do I wanna do for this guy? Hmm. Try to th I'm trying to think of a voice, voice for this guy. He looks like he's a smooth talker. I know it's kind of late, but I baked way too many cookies, and I just can't have these in the house or I'll eat them all. Yes, he sands. Or papyrus. Papyrus. Hi, I know it's kind of late, but I bet. Oh, shit. Oh, motherfucker. Oh. <laughs> yeah. Oh, where are my manners? My name is Joseph. I'm next. I'm your next door neighbor. Sorry, the game tweaked on me. Oh yes, hi, I'm Randall. That's what my name is. <laughs> I saw the moving van and thought I'd do the neighborly thing and bring you some. My daughter Christy wanted me to let you know she'd bake them herself. Joseph leans in and whispers. Oh. But between you and me, she just sprinkled on the chocolate chips. Good one. <laughs> 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 Hello. Wow, cookies, huh? So nice to meet you. Just fancy plates of cookies with huh. a smile. Huh. Well, thanks for the cookies. More McDonald's. Mm. Amanda Copa. She's gone. That's my daughter. Her name is Amanda. She's a charmer. Yeah. Daughters are tough. Sons are also tough. Oh. <clears throat> Children in general are just tough. I hear that. I mean... There'd have to be something wrong with you to try and raise more than two. <laughs> I have four kids. What have you done? Oh, uh, I, I meant... Oh. Don't worry, you didn't mean to be rude. Oh no, this is the first neighbor I've met. My social life is already in a tailspin. I wonder if it's too late to move again. Uh, yeah, okay. Oh. <laughs> is the missus around? Mister, actually, and, uh, no, not anymore. He died. Oh. Uh, I'm sorry for your loss. No, no, it's all right. No, no, it's all right. Wow, this is uncomfortable. We stand here, there quietly for a moment, acutely aware of how awkward we both made things. Oh. I'm sorry, can you close the door real quick? I look at Joseph quizzically but comply. After a second, I hear a knock on the door opening, and I see Joseph standing there with a huge smile. <laughs> Hi, I'm your new neighbor, Joseph. I promise not to talk about your dead spouse this time. I'm throwing a barbecue for the cul-de-sac, and I'd love for you to come by and meet the rest of the neighbors in our community. What do you say, pal? <laughs> that sounds great. My daughter Amanda and I would love to stop by. Also, four kids is a perfectly normal amount of children to have. We shake hands to seal the deal. Mm. Well, neighbor, I'll let you get to bed. See you at 3 p.m. on Saturday. Sure thing, neighbor. Joseph starts walking away, but stops to think for a second and turns around. Hey, in all seriousness, raising a kid on your own can't be easy. If you ever need to talk about stuff, I'm the youth minister at church down the street. Oh, I don't know. I, I wouldn't really consider myself a youth. Nice. You look pretty young to me, but suit yourself. It's the baby face. Gosh. Aw, oh, shucks. He seemed nice. Amanda walks back into the living room, crumbs on her face, cookie in hand. That was some of the smoothest recover I've ever seen. I should take notes. Yeah. See, you're already fitting in great. Where'd those cookies go? Uh. They're gone. I'm sorry. Yeah. If it makes you feel any better, they weren't very good. So you ate all of them anyway? <laughs> the M is out. Right. Well, kiddo, I'm going to go catch the cave. Have fun, Dad. Liquor before beef, you're in the clear. What? 
Wow, I guess I didn't really think this plan through. I'm not entirely sure where the closest bar is, and Amanda still hasn't shown me how to use the GPS on my phone. So I'm just gonna pick a direction and walk in it. Let's go. This way. Cool, okay, we're marching. We're marching in the direction of the game. Any game, really? In the distance. Could it be? A big burned out neon sign hangs above a tiny dive bar. Jim and Kim's. Ah, oh, alright. It'll do. Uh, all day pack. The bar is small and dimly lit. The crack of pool balls sounds sounds in the back as persons patrons laugh and joke. A string of multicolored Christmas lights over the bar hover above the bartender. I can't tell if he's Jim or Kim. I pull up a seat at the bar. What'll it be? One beer, please. Sure thing, boss. Bartender slides me an ice cold beer. I take a sip and enjoy the refreshing taste. Say, are you Jim or Kim? I'm Neil. Oh. I awkwardly turn my attention to the game, which is playing on one of the TVs on the wall. As luck would have it, my team of preference is not only playing, but is currently in the lead, which is always a good thing. The brightly colored mascot, which is some kind of animal, does cartwheels. I silently cheer on my favorite team, hoping that I don't get into any confrontational arguments with a fan of the opposing team. Several people in this bar are wearing the distinctive colors of the team I dislike, although I believe from their demeanor that, like me, the passion for their team is all in good fun. Hey. A middle-aged woman holding a nearly empty wine glass sidles up to the bar and sits uncomfortably close to me. Hey, sailor. Oh, hello. Uh, Good to see fresh meat in here. I'm Mary. Come here often. Ow, that hurts. Oh, no, I actually just moved to this part of town today. I'm Randall, by the way. Hey. Are you watching the game? Yeah, my preferred team is in the lead. If they keep this up, they'll win the game with ease. Oh. oh, I love that team. Also, I love that game. I love someone who knows their way around balls. <laughs> I'm getting the impression that she's a little drunk. Uh. Mm -hmm. Buy a gallon drink. Ah, uh, fuck it, why not? I'm almost reluctantly sick. I almost reluctantly signal the bartender in order to marry another glass of wine. Neil jokes back and forth with Mary. They're clearly friends, and this clearly isn't her first time doing this. She dips her glass at me. I suppose I gotta keep you company now. Hey. So what do you want to do? Uh, what's the scoop? You came to the right broad. Mm. I'm an observer. I watch people. I see everything. I know everyone. Nothing gets past me. So... Give it a rest. So what? I thought you were gonna... I forgot what we were talking about. <laughs> about the gossip? You said nothing gets past you. Oh, right. I'm also a steel trap. Confidential to a fault. So what else can you tell me about this part of town? Mm. <laughs> it's quiet, that's for sure. If you want an idyllic little life with a white picket fences, this is the place to do it. But every town has its secrets, you know. She takes a sip of her drink. That was a little too ominous for my taste. She leans closer. Hey, Would you like to learn some of my secrets? Oh boy. Uh, maybe some other time. Give it a rest. Suit yourself, sailor. Mary saunters off, seeing her, setting her sights on the newest bar patron to enter. Thank God. Blech. I happily watch the game over another beer. The game has gotten close in terms of points, a little too close than what I'm comfortable with. After a particularly skilled player scores a number of points for the other team, putting them in the lead, I hear an affirmative grunt from another man at the bar. Go team. It's the brooding man from the coffee shop, from the coffee spoon. He sits alone, sipping whiskey and watching the game as well. Enjoying the game? I am now that we're winning. Oh, we must be rooting for different teams. In my opinion, my team is far superior. I have to disagree with that based upon our win-loss record. I'd say that my team is superior. That's where you're wrong, since as it stands right now, my team is beating yours. The conversation ends there, and we both look back silently, rooting for our respective teams. The game is close, with both sides playing their hardest to win, but in the end, my team prevails. Quiet cheers ripple through the bar. I raise a respectful glass at the man drinking whiskey. He raises his in response, an unspoken truce is formed between us on a mutual love of the game. He motions to the bartender, who pours two glasses of whiskey. The man slides over to me. Slides one over to me. The name's Robert. Thanks, I'm Randall. Oh. You must be... You must be new here. Mary already hit on you. Yeah. Robert chuckles. She's a peach. Well, you picked the best bar in town. As slimy as it is, you'll never find a better spot than Jim and Kim's. Is there actually a Jim and Kim or that run this place? I... No, that'd be Neil. Neil waves from a... Neil waves from across the bar. Hey. 
Good guy, Neil. Not enough Neils in this world. Okay. You a whiskey fellow or a beer fellow? Beer, but I'll drink most things. You like shots? I love shots. Thank God. Robert nods to Neil, who serves up two shots of whiskey. He hands one to me. Here's to your health. We take the shots. The whiskey burns going down, but I try my hardest to look tough. Wait, I think this is what making friends is. Okay, Randall, this guy's out of my friends league. Friendly, but I think if I play my cards right, we'll be pals in no time. Uh, a cool leather jacket. I like your jacket. Mm -hmm. Thanks, been in my family for a long time. Passed down from firstborn to firstborn. Cursed, some would say. Man, this guy is mysterious and cool. Oh. Way cooler than I am, at least. Robert signals to the bartender for another round. What are you doing here tonight? Uh, daughter kicked me out of the house. Not like forever, she's just having a sleepover with her friends. Mm -hmm. Family type, huh? Single dad. Uh, hmm. He gets up. I... Be right back. Got a powder in my nose. He's going pee. Never seen Robert this talkative. He must like him. Huh, I guess so. Gotta admit that Robert has gruff charm to him. If a guy like that thinks I'm cool, then I really must be. Robert comes back from the bathroom and grabs his leather jacket. Uh -huh. I'm gonna go home. You head my way? <laughs> Robert and I leave the bar to find ourselves walking in the same direction. So. I live in this cul-de-sac down the way. I live in this cul-de-sac down the way. Does everybody live there? Me too. We just finished unpacking oh. today. Great place to be. Good neighbors. Well, some of them. Who's that? We get to Robert's house, which is just a few houses away from mine. We stop and he returns to me. I don't kiss and tell, Randall. Huh. So are we doing this or what? Oh. What? I... You know. You want to come inside or not? A wave of realization rushes over me. I blush. Uh... Lay it on smooth. Well, I don't see why not. Uh. That sounded smoother in my head. Let's do it. I follow, up to, I follow him up to his door, and he fumbles with the keys for a second and unlocks the door, leading me inside. The moment the door closes behind us, he pushes me up against the wall and kisses me, grabbing my hips. Come on. Robert takes my hand and leads me up the stairs into what I assume is his bedroom. It's so dark that I can't see anything but Robert's intense expression. He kisses me again, and I hear him shucking off his jacket. I clumsy take off mine, too. His hands roam down my chest, and I suddenly he's tugging at my belt. I, I, uh, I don't normally do this. Do you want to stop? No. No. Good. Robert continues to unbuckle my belt and guides me to the bed. Let's have some fun. Okay. It's like, do I need to censor this? <laughs> Sunlight streams in the between the slats of the blinds. My head is pounding. I usually I really overdid it last night. Wait a minute. This isn't my old house or my new house. Oh right. I look around for Robert, but find myself alone. Hello? There's a clatter from the bathroom, and the door opens. Robert is fully dressed and grabs his keys. That was fun. Yeah, it was. Huh. You should go. That's certainly not what I was expecting. Well, uh, talk to you later? Mm -hmm. Robert cracks a smile. Sure, your clothes are over there. I, hasti I hastily get dressed and show myself out. The sun is unbearably bright, and I need to lie down. I start to make my way back home when I suddenly remember. Amanda! Oh, boy. I rush back home and throw the door open. Something smells delicious. Amanda? Oh. Amanda runs out of the kitchen and looks slightly disappointed. Uh. Oh, man, I was kind of hoping you'd gotten kidnapped and I was going to have to come rescue you. No, I, uh, made a friend at the bar last night and ended up sleeping over at his place. Where are the Evans? Oh. I left a little while ago. Oh, you guys have fun? Yeah, watch some movies. Date snacks, stole a car, you know, usual sleepover stuff. You teens and your larceny. So, this breakfast that's cooking, what's that all about? Mm. Ah, fuck. Oh, there's hash browns and eggs and bacon. Can I? Aww. Yes, you can have some breakfast. Bless you, sweet child. My head throbs. Ugh, I gotta do something about this hangover. Amanda, your loving father might have overdone it last night. 
Ooh, somebody's hung over. Father of the year. You wouldn't happen to have any aspirin or... Yeah. I've got just the thing. Hang on. Huh. Amanda runs to the fridge to pull out a jar of pickles. Amanda, what? Ha. Drink this. The pickle juice? Whoa. Yep. It's just what I used. It's what I used once. I uh, would assume someone would use. I would also use assume that it works pretty well. Hmm? Although I've never tried it before and won't try it. Obviously. Hmm. Uh, you did? All right. Um, do as I say, not as I do. Yeah. You got it. This better work. I doubt a sip of the tart juice. No, no. More than that. Way more than that. Hey. I mean, I assume. Oh. Watch it, you. I drank more pickle juice and helped myself to the delicious breakfast that Amanda has graciously allowed me to partake in. After inhaling some hash browns and dunking several pieces of bacon into a runny egg yolk, I'm starting to feel a little better. Amanda grabs her backpack and keys. Well, I gotta get to class. Don't forget the meeting with Mr. Vega, okay? He said it was important. Love ya. I'll be there. Knock him dead, kiddo. Nah. Always do. We do our secret handshake and choose off. I get a little work done at home before I glance at my watch and see that it's almost time for the meeting. I hop in the shower, change clothes, and head on my way. Still a little hungover. I'm gonna call this a stopping point. So, thank you guys, as always, for watching. Please like, comment, and subscribe. Let me know if I'm doing it wrong in the comments below, and I will catch you guys in the next one. Toodle-doodle!